drop you off at school. And if he gets warm, you can take your sweater off, but remember where you put it. Just think of it. My little girl is going to get vaccinated at school. Do we have to talk about it? Well, not anymore. Because after today, it's going to be something in the past, not in the future. Does that mean something good? That means there's nothing to worry about. <laughs> we better hurry up. All set for the vaccination, Dodie? Ah, uh, Dodie, you'd rather not talk about it. Oh, heck, Dodie. That's nothing but a little old needle stuck in your arm. That's the part that kills my stomach. <laughs> hey, uh, honey, no more kid lunches. You get the same chow as the big guys. Mean I got bigger since last night? Sure, if you're big enough to get vaccinated. Charlie, I'm afraid they might be late for school. <laughs> Uh, don't let ancient history throw you, Chip, just because it's new this semester. I won't. I hear old man Gray cocked out. I mean, Mr. Gray got something in his bloodstream and won't be back. Who's gonna take over his class? I don't know. But usually they get Miss Swenson from the music department. She doesn't know what's going on. <laughs> in history, that is. She's probably okay in other stuff. Oh, we keep forgetting you're a teacher. <laughs> Come on, look, you guys. Get your feet out of your mouths and get started. Have fun, honey. Don't you worry, honey. Everything's gonna be just fine. Well, everybody's uh, all ready to take off for school, huh? Yeah, yeah. all set. Dodie, to, uh, today's vaccination day, huh? Boy, Daddy! <laughs> Did I uh, say something wrong? Vaccination. That's a word we're trying to ignore. Oh. Well, Dodie, I'll tell you. Now, if you promise to get your vaccination and make believe it doesn't hurt, when I come home tonight, I'll bring you a present. Hey, me! Bye, Dad! Bye, Mama! Bribery. Why didn't I think of that? <laughs> Your lunch pail, Dodie. Oh, there you are, oh. sweetheart. Well, so long, everybody. See you later. Bye, guys. Bye, Dodie. Bye. Hello. Yes, yeah, speaking. Oh. Well, I, I don't know. Uh, who is it? Uh, it's the Board of Education. They want me to work for a couple of days. Oh, well, grab it. <laughs> See you tonight. Goodbye. Uh, well, yes, fine. Well, I, I, I couldn't be there until about 10 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Yes, I have it. Thank you. Whoever they got is late. Whoever they got's got to be a lot easier than Mr. Gray. Hello, everybody. I'm sorry I'm late. I'm Mrs. Douglas. I'm here to teach you ancient history. Uh, young man, your feet. I might as well warn you that I don't put up with that sort of thing. Now, I don't know how long I'll be with you. That all depends on Mr. Gray's recuperation. For being older, she's a pretty together-looking chick. Knock it off, Howard. It's my mother. <laughs> now, if you'll all turn to chapter one in your textbooks. I knew you'd like it. Who's your friend? This is Beatrice. She's in my class. Hiya, Beatrice. Hi. Everybody stands in line to get vaccinated. And it's okay if you cry or anything. Yeah, well, this sounds like fun. Now, look, girls, I got a lot of work to do. You two go in the kitchen, and Chip and Ernie will fix you a snack. Your maid sure has a low voice. <laughs> the maid is Uncle Charlie. Come on. I said was I'm glad Mom isn't my substitute teacher. Boys, this is Beatrice, and we don't think vaccination is a big deal or anything. Congratulations. See? What did we tell you? Hey, why don't you girls have a seat, and I'll get you some milk. Come on. So, the vaccination was all right, huh? Yeah, I just cried for a couple of minutes. Coming up. Here we go. 
Go ahead, Beatrice. Dig right in. What are you looking at, Beatrice? Nothing. What was that all about? Beatrice said she had to go home. Well, did that call for whispers? Beatrice wanted to know if it's okay to be in love with Ernie. <laughs> Hi, Dad. Hi, Aaron. Is your mother home yet? No, I think she got hung up with paperwork after school. Oh. Dad, I know you probably want to relax before dinner, but I've got a problem. Could I talk to you about it? Well, sure, Ernie. Hello? Oh, hi, Beatrice. Dad, this is my problem. <laughs> no. No, I'm not mad at you, Beatrice. I'm talking to my father. Oh, hi, Dad. Oh, hi, Chipper. Uh, can I talk to you? I've got a problem. Oh, well, I'm afraid you'll have to stand in line, Chip. But uh, I could take you right after Ernie. Look, in the first place, I'd feel stupid autographing a picture myself. <laughs> Chip, pull the old phone job. Hey, Ernie, would you get off the phone? I've got an important call to make. Hear that, Beatrice? My brother has to use the phone. Goodbye. Bernie, this uh, problem of yours, is she in your class? <laughs> no. I'll wait till you hear this. She's in Dodie's class. Oh. She walked in and fell for him in two minutes. Broke every record in the book. Well. It's not funny. Hello? Oh, man, Beatrice. <laughs> as long as he's stuck, could I talk to you before Mom gets home? All right, Chip, uh, step into my office. Hey, uh, do you want to talk to Dodie? She's upstairs someplace. You don't, huh? <laughs> oh, what is it, Chip? Well, my fate or coincidence or something. Mom's my substitute history teacher. You're kidding. You know the odds against that must be amazing. I guess so. Dad, she's kind of strict. Well, Chip, a uh, substitute teacher has to take hold right away. If she doesn't, she's in trouble. Well, that part's okay, only... Well, how am I supposed to act? Chip, help! Ernie, you get out of that yourself now, and, uh, and do it honestly. How do you mean, uh, how are you supposed to act? Well, she's my mother and everything, and everybody knows it. But I think she's leaning on me just to show the other kids her own kid isn't getting any special favors. Oh, no, I don't think Barbara would do that. Well, she wouldn't do it on purpose, but maybe subconsciously. Oh, hi, honey. Oh, what a day. I'm sorry I'm late, sweetheart. Well, how's my prize pupil? Okay, teach. Hey, uh, look, Beatrice, I think I'm coming down with laryngitis. Ernie has a young girl problem, and I mean young. <laughs> Right. Like a sore throat, only it doesn't hurt as much. Oh, there goes my voice. I'll see you. <laughs> well, it wasn't exactly honest, but it was the only thing I could think of. Darling? Hmm? How did uh, things go to school today? Fine. It's funny how you get back in the swing of things. Yeah. No uh, problems? Hmm. -mm. Nobody uh, gave you any trouble, huh? Hmm. You know, Steve, the kids are really great today. Yeah. Nobody uh, needed any special attention or anything? No. We were all relaxed and we communicated very well. Why? Oh, no, you know, just, uh, just wondering. Yeah. It was fine. It was just fine. <laughs> about it last night and it seems to me the romans had no right to conquer and enslave the less advanced people that's good thinking julie thank you now can anyone else expand on this idea of julie's 
Chip Douglas? Uh, I thought what Julie said just about covered it. <laughs> For instance, do you think Athens needed the benefit of the Roman civilization? Was that in the book? <laughs> Part of it. But I'm asking more for personal opinions. Athens was a very advanced society. I guess they didn't need them. Who? Who didn't need whom? The Athenians didn't need the Romans. <laughs> <laughs> nice going, Chip. <sighs> Maybe Howard Jacobs can enlighten us. I think what Chip says just about covers it. <laughs> what's eating you? Nothing. Then what's the idea of slamming your books on the table? I'm going upstairs. You know what that's all about? Well, I guess having your own mother for a teacher rattles your nerve endings. <laughs> Just give it to him. Get well soon. <laughs> Who's sick? Beatrice says you have that talking disease in your throat. Oh, oh. <clears throat> my laryngitis. Uh, well, it's getting better. But I better go put some medicine on it. I'll see you. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm home early. Hi, Uncle Charlie. Uh, Hi. Well, now, this must be Beatrice. Yeah, it's her. Hmm. How was school? Neat. I got another pedal on my courtesy daisy. Oh, good. Mama, can Beatrice stay here for the weekend? Well, I don't see why not. We have to call her mommy. Neat. 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 Let's go. Mom put you on the spot at school yesterday. Look, you stay out of this, and I'll stay out of your romance with Beatrice, okay? Okay. But I still think you're making a big, high-strung deal out of... Hey, I'm not here. <laughs> Charlie's busy, so I thought I'd come in here late then. <laughs> what are you doing down there, Ernie? Oh, uh, the... Uh, nothing. Hmm. Oh, well, just leave them here. I'll take them down when I'm through with the beds. That's okay. Is there something bothering, Chip? Well, uh... Ernie. Ernie. I, uh... Excuse me. Um, I think Uncle Charlie is hollering for me. He'll be back, honey. Okay, so will I. So she followed you around a little, Ernie. It's really quite flattering when you come to think of it. But, Dad, she doesn't follow me around a little. She follows me around all the time. <laughs> And if the guys at school ever find out about this, I'm a dead pelican. Ernie, uh, 
When I was in second grade, I had a big crush on my teacher. But as I remember, it didn't last more than a week or so. Yeah, but, Dad, I... Ernie, I'm sorry, but I have a little work to do here. Okay, Dad. <laughs> Can I uh, talk to you? Well, yeah, I guess so, Chip. Uh, what is it? Well, it's about Mom. Well, she keeps after me in class. Yesterday, she asked me about Rome and Athens in front of everybody. Well, Chip, I, uh, I wouldn't say that asking you questions about Athens and Rome in history class uh, was exactly persecution. Well, I didn't say it was persecution, Dan. I just thought maybe you could get her off my back. Well, what do you want me to say? Chip feels that uh, you shouldn't ask him questions in class. Anyway, Chip, uh, Mr. Gray will be back pretty soon, and then you won't have to be embarrassed about uh, your mother being your teacher. Man, Dad, you make me sound like a dumb kid or something. Well, I don't want to do that. There, uh, there is one way to handle this, though. Well, like what? Discuss it with her. But, Dad, I... Chip, I have some work to get out of here. Okay. <laughs> Oh, uh, yes, I, uh, I'd say you have a turn coming. We want to know if Ernie could visit next week at Beatrice's house. Well, Beatrice, I, uh, I'm afraid he can't. You see, uh, he has a lot of chores to do. Oh. Beatrice wants to know if you could get Ernie to stand still once in a while. Well, I, uh, I could talk to him, Beatrice. Uh, why does she want him to stand still? Because when he's moving around, she can't kiss him. <laughs> Look, Beatrice, this is one of the plants that work like anything. I know, I made it up. Daddy's downstairs and Ernie's in his bedroom. You hide in the closet and I'll hide behind the door. Ready? Ready. Hey, uh, will you go see what she wants, Chip? I'm liable to get nailed by Beatrice. All right, I'm going downstairs anyway. I think he's coming. I think I'm nervous. <laughs> opening a can of tuna. Now, just keep your mouth shut. But I think Dad's right. We can't go on like this. I like Barbara too much to resent her. Hi. Here's your chance, Alice. <laughs> chance for what? Shall I put the groceries? I'll take them. Mrs. Harper. I'm Arthur Morgan. You taught me at Valley Junior High. You were the history substitute for a couple months after our regular teacher eloped. Oh, I remember, Arthur. Well, I'm Mrs. Douglas now. That's my son, Chip. Hi. Hi. And I guess you know Mr. O'Casey. Yeah, we know each other. Your mother was the only teacher I had who really ever taught me anything. She was strict, but she really got the job done. Was I really that strict? Well, don't you remember making us stand up and talk about Mesopotamia in our own words? She always said she wanted us to think for ourselves. Oh, I may not remember the exact dates, but to this day I can tell you about all the cultural changes in the Fertile Crescent and how they affected the societies around them. Okay, you tell me about the Code of Hammurabi. 
From the book or in my own words? <laughs> That's marvelous. Actually, this delivery job is just temporary. I'm going after my teaching credential. Oh, good for you, Arthur. See ya. As a matter of fact, uh, you were the one who inspired me. Well, listen, tell me, what college do you think you're... You still gonna open that can of tuna? <laughs> no. Good. It's a sign you're growing up. <laughs> it's okay, he's asleep. Chip would leave. I'd start a conversation. He'd become silent. And then all of a sudden this afternoon, he became himself. Well, good. Did you ever talk with him? No. Why? Well, I just wondered. Maybe it's my imagination, but I, I started to feel that he resented me. Come in. What? What is something wrong, honey? It's awfully late. Beatrice wants to go home. Oh, uh, don't you feel well, Beatrice? I'm okay. She fell right out of love with Ernie, just now. Oh, she did. Did uh, Ernie say something you didn't like, Beatrice? Uh-uh. She kissed him. She kissed Ernie? Yeah. But she said it was like kissing a chair. <laughs> Well, I, I don't think we're getting the full picture. Uh, Beatrice kissed Ernie when? When he was asleep and didn't wake up. Oh, I see. You do? <laughs> you see, Beatrice kissed Ernie, and it wasn't what she expected, so she fell out of love with him. Is that it? Is that it? Yeah. Well, Beatrice, uh, I think it's a little late for you to go home now. I mean, if we called your parents this time of night, they, they might be frightened. I guess. So, uh, do you think you could stand being in the same house with Ernie until tomorrow? I guess. Well, you better go back to bed now. Want me to take you in? Man, Mama, you think we're little kids or something? <laughs> oh, well, I, I guess not. I mean, after all, one of you already having been in love. <laughs> Good night, sweetheart. Good night, Beatrice. Good night. Night. Well, poor Ernie. What do you mean, poor Ernie? Well, he just hasn't got it. I mean, girls kiss him, and it's like kissing a chair. <laughs> Sad. Ernie's father certainly doesn't have that problem. You know it. of malfunction. Well, that'll work, Rob, but uh, what do you think about incorporating a bypass system right here? Yeah, yeah I could try that. Yeah. Mr. Anderson to see you. Oh, send him in, Janice. Hello, Robert. Hi, Mr. Anderson. Steve, can you spare a few minutes? Government business. Yes, of course. I'll check back with you later. Yeah, Rob. Right. 
Steve, this is Mark Tanner, security liaison officer from Washington. This is Steve Douglas. Tanner? My pleasure. If there are any questions, Steve, call me later. Thanks, Bob. Well, uh, sit down, Mr. Tanner. Thank you. I didn't realize I was working on anything that required security. Well, you're not. But you will be. Oh? This. Well. Seems operable? It's operable, but we feel not to maximum efficiency. And what we want you to do is to hype up the supercharger to increase the intake flow. Well, I'd say that's feasible. Good. How long do you think it'll take? Well, I wouldn't want to say, Tanner, until I get into it a little further. Well, actually, time isn't a major consideration. Washington feels it very important, mandatory, in fact, that this be kept a top secret project. I can't stress that too strongly. What uh, special precautions do you uh, think are necessary? We don't want the work done in the plant. Would you be able to do it at home? Oh, yes. I very often work at home, and then I could put in a full day. No, no. Nothing like that. The only difference being that you work on this at night, an hour possibly here and there weekends. No, that's no problem. Good. Mr. Douglas, if you see anything or anyone around your home that strikes you as even slightly suspicious, you're to call me immediately. I'll keep you posted on where I can be reached at all times. Fine. One more thing. This security must also extend to members of your family. Now, is there anyone at home who's likely to suspect what you're doing? <laughs> now, I can assure the government that's the last thing it has to worry about. Good. I'll keep in touch. Bye. <laughs> Oh, hi, everybody. Oh, hi, hi Dad. Hi, Dad. Hi. What have you got in the extra briefcase, Dad? Oh, uh, it's a little work I thought I'd get out of the way at home. Too top seeker for the plant, huh? <laughs> boy, Ernie. Yeah, boy, Ernie. Working nights, huh? Does that mean the honeymoon's over? Uh, hardly. Real hush-hush project, huh, Dad? <laughs> Would you like a nice cold drink? I love it. Okay. Uh, I'll bring it up. Ernie, would you take over? Ernie, you better knock off reading all those spy and FBI books. You're getting flaky. Well, I may go into the investigation field, so I'm doing a lot of research. This is a typical M.O. Who's going to suspect Dad working on a top-secret project here at the house? Not me, that's for sure. That's all you know. Those are spies off, too. That's why they do it. Sure, sure. Security rule A5. It's known as going behind the lace curtain. Ernie? Yep. You're a nut. <laughs> hey, you guys forgot your lunches. Charlie, it's Friday. We always eat in the cafeteria. Me too! Now you guys know what you can buy me for Christmas. A calendar. <laughs> hey, wait a minute, Chef. Uh, go on here, Dodie. See if you can catch up with Shirley. Okay. See you guys later. How come you did that? No use endangering Dodie, too. Yeah, and Ernie. Look over there. What about him? Well, he's not reading that newspaper. He's really watching us. Well, why would he want to be watching us? To find out how to get to Dad's secret project. Man, Ernie, the woodpeckers are going to get you one of these days. <laughs> you wouldn't say that if you had done as much research as I have. I'm telling you, the Pinkertons had a case just like this. I knew Dad was on a hush-hush project the minute he walked through the door with that extra briefcase. You know what, Ernie? You're cracking up. Come on. Place taken? Drop anchor. Were you uh, expecting someone? 
No, I got stuck with a couple of school lunches, and I thought I might as well come over here in the park and eat them. Oh. You uh, care for a little chow? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Hey, uh, haven't I seen you over on, um, Elm Street? You know that kind of light brown house on the right-hand side? Yes, I think so. Well, that's the Douglas residence. I'm the uncle around there. I see, I see. Mr. Douglas certainly seems like an intelligent man. What kind of work does he do? He's a darn good aeronautical engineer. Hmm. One of the aircraft plants around here? Pacific Research, Inc. Must be well paid. Oh, you can bet your barnacles he is. Sounds like a good man. Well, they don't make him any better. Let me tell you a few things about Steve. our house all right. Some spy, Ernie, right out in plain sight. Oh, that's part of the technique. Security rule B3. Avoid suspicion by doing the obvious. You get it? Yeah. You're cracking up. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty soon, Dodie. Right about both. It's on my list. You want to go with me? No, Myrtle and me just started drawing. Myrtle and I. Oh, when you finish, you put everything away, okay? Okay, Mommy. Okay, goodbye, love. Dodie. Come on, Myrtle. Let's go borrow one of Daddy's pencils. the babies for a walk. What's the problem, Dad? Well, I'm, uh, I'm working on a project, and I put the model in the closet, and uh, it doesn't seem to be there. Maybe you forgot where you put it. No, I don't think so. Well, it's going to be around somewhere. I'll help you look for uh, it. Don't bother, honey. I'll, uh, I'll check with the boys. Oh, fellas, uh, have either of you been in my closet for any reason? Not me. Oh, me either. Why? Oh, I, uh, I just seem to have misplaced something. What's missing? Oh, it's nothing. Uh, well, you fellas uh, do whatever you're going to do. Uh, Tanner, please. Uh, Tanner, this is Douglas. Something's happened here. I. Uh, I guess I should have been more careful, but uh, 
After I got through working on the project model last night, I put it in the briefcase and put it in my closet, and, uh, and now it's gone. No, nothing unusual. But, uh, no, nobody in the house but the family. Look, Daddy. Dodie. I'm taking Myrtle for a boat ride. Uh, hang on, Tanner. Honey, wait right there, will you? Uh, Tanner, everything's all right. Yes, I found it. No, uh, no problem. <laughs> so am I. Goodbye. Honey, uh, Myrtle's boat doesn't really belong to me. Uh, and I have to take very good care of it. You shouldn't have taken it without asking me, sweetheart. I'm sorry, Daddy. Well, that's all right. There's no harm done. I'll tell you, we'll get another ride for Myrtle, okay? Okay. <laughs> Dad, uh, that gadget is pretty important, isn't it? Well, Ernie, I uh, like to think everything I work on is important. Yeah, but this is different, isn't it? What makes you say that? The spy. What else? Spy? What spy? That spy. What makes you think he's a spy? Well, what else would a guy read in a newspaper in a car be? Well, he just could be a guy reading a newspaper in a car. But there, that's B3. B3? Security rule B3. Avoid suspicion by doing the obvious. Well, Ernie, I don't think we have to worry about a man reading a newspaper. But then, he was reading it when we went to school yesterday. And when we got home, he was parked in a different place, reading it again. He chips saw him, too. Saw who? The spy. All I saw was a guy reading a newspaper in a car, and Ernie makes a whole big deal about it. Well, I sure did make a big thing out of it. He was watching us in this house. You could tell. Did he seem like a suspicious character to you, Chip? Heck no. He was just a guy. Well, that's because you're not up on research like I am. Who'd be spying on us anyway? That's right, Chip. Well, thanks for the information, fellas. I, uh, I thought you were on your way upstairs, huh? Well, I was, uh, but I can give whoever you're calling a real good description of the guy. Well, thanks, anyway. Uh, Mr. Tanner, please. Uh, Tanner, it's Douglas again. Something else has come up now. This may be nothing, but uh, the boys tell me there's been a suspicious-looking character hanging around here. Well, there's no one in front of the house now. What makes you think he was a suspicious character? Well, B3. B3? Avoid suspicion by doing the obvious. Ernie's up on all the latest spy techniques. Of course. Chip? Well, I didn't notice it at first, but he did look sort of shifty. Shadiest looking character you ever saw. Charlie, you think this is the same fellow you were talking to in the park? Sure, I spotted him the minute he sat down. <laughs> what did you talk about? What talk? It was all questions and answers. What kind of questions? Well, stuff about Steve and where he worked and all that. Well, what'd you tell him? Oh, 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 well, now, I, uh, I played it a little cagey. <laughs> I'm sure Charlie didn't give out anything technical. Yeah, I'm too smart for that. I think we better get a description of this man, have a little talk with him. What, uh, what height would you say he was? About 5'11". I'd say he was closer to 5'8". He was medium. <laughs> Age? Well, he was old, and he had a beard. The guy was young, about 60. <laughs> he was middle-aged. Well, I guess that's enough. Well, don't you want to know the color of his eyes? It, it, w it would help. A brown. They were blue. They were green with little brown flecks. Don't forget, I was sitting right next to him. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Well, Mr. Tanner, I'm, I'm almost positive his eyes were sitting right next to him. This is what I would do. Don't feel badly that your descriptions vary. They usually do. But if you see this man again, call me. 
Okay. You bet. Well, Tanner, I'm sorry this whole thing happened. It's all right, Steve. Well, it's my fault. Hey, that's him. Grab him. Won't you step inside, sir? What? Perhaps I'd better come back some other time. Oh, please. Man, espionage right now in front row. Sit down. You're sure this is the man? How could I forget a face like that? Boys? That's him, all right. You're sure? Just like we described him. <laughs> what we'd like to know is uh, why you're so interested in me. Why were you watching this house? What's your name? Steve, when I was down at the... Just a little baby. Papa, have you met everybody? Well, not really. Well, this is my husband, Stephen Douglas. Stephen, this is Professor Harper. How do you do, Professor? Do you... This is Uncle Charlie O'Casey. Hello again. Our sons, Chip and Ernie. Hi. How do you do? And, uh... Mark Tanner. Uh... How do you do? Oh, I'm so glad to see you. How long have you been here? Just a few minutes. Well, I'm so glad that Steve was here to welcome you. Uh, Barbara, I'm afraid there's been quite a misunderstanding. Oh? Chip and Ernie reported seeing a suspicious-looking stranger watching the house yesterday, and, uh, well, it turned out to be Professor Harper. I'm very sorry, sir. No need to apologize. <laughs> what a silly idea. Well, no. They were right, Barbara. I was watching the house yesterday, and... Asking questions about Steve. But uh, why? Because I was concerned about Barbara and Dorothy. I wanted to find out if you'd be a good husband and father to them. As good as my son was. Oh, Pop. Steve, I'll be going. You don't need me any longer. Well, sure, nice working with you, Mr. Tanner. Well, thank you, Ernie. If there's anything else I can help you with, give me a call. I'll certainly do that. I'm sorry we were so full up around here, Professor. I hope you didn't sleep too badly on the couch. Never better, Steve. Thank you. Oh, thank you for your hospitality. So you're a teacher of Oriental philosophy. Seems a little obscure sometimes. Look, while you two men are talking, I'm going to go make some beds. When you married her, Steve, you married one of the finest women who... As I agree, sir. Uh, I must be on my way now. Well, I wish you wouldn't hurry. We're all enjoying your visit. Thank you, but I've done what I came to do. Now I know Dorothy and Barbara are happy. Morning, Daddy. Well, good morning, sweetheart. Uh, well, aren't you going to say good morning to your grandpa? Morning. Uh, good morning, Grandpa. Morning, Grandpa. Good morning, Dorothy. I mean, Dodie. Uh, Professor Harper, you could do something for us if you would. Oh? 
Barbara and I have a couple of things we ought to do this morning, and uh, Uncle Charlie and the boys are going to be busy, too. If uh, you could take Dodie for a walk in the park for a couple of hours, you'd be doing the family a big favor. Oh. Would you like that, my dear? Uh, you could take uh, Myrtle along. Could I? Sure. Uh, this is Myrtle. I think bringing your doll along would be fine. Myrtle's not a doll. She's my friend. She lives on my aunt a lot. I see. Well, anyway, I'd love to have you bring her along. Well, I'm glad Myrtle could come with us. She has quite a personality. Yeah. Myrtle says you're a nice grandpa to have. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, Myrtle. Myrtle says that's okay. Do you know my daddy, Grandpa? Yes. All his life. He was real big. I knew him when he was little, too. Like me? Like you. I think you look like him when you smile. Did he have a puppet like Myrtle? No. No, he had a dog. What was this dog's name? Um, King. We have a dog named Tramp. Mm. Me and Mama got him when we married the Douglases family. <laughs> Did you know that, Grandpa? Did I know what, dear? That when you marry a family, all the junk belongs to you, too. Isn't that neat? Oh, very neat. Was my daddy good when he was little? Most of the time. He grew up to be a good man. I was very proud of him. Then I had a nice daddy. Yes, you did. And you have a nice daddy now. Steve reminds me of him in many ways. Isn't that neat? Very neat. Very neat indeed. Dad, uh, could you drop me off at Chrissy's on your way to work? Sure. Who's Chrissy? I don't think I've heard her name before. Uh, new romance? Heck no. We're on the litter bug committee together. and We have to plan our strategy. <laughs> uh, how come you're taking that back to the plant? Well, I'm all finished with it, Aaron. <laughs> Pop it. That's a big relief. That's always good to finish a project. Especially if it's a top-secret hush-hush project. <laughs> Did I say anything about it being hush-hush? Oh, I know. But I spotted it for an 85 the moment you walked in the door. <laughs> you did? What's an 85? Going behind the lace curtain. Oh, I see. Well, let me give you a hand, Dad. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> you know something, Dad? It's a good thing Professor Harper was in a real honest-to-goodness spy. Why? Mr. Tanner is sure rusty on his security rules. <laughs> That's all there is to it? That's all. You are now Miss Dorothy Douglas, young lady. Gosh! <laughs> I'd like to congratulate you, Mr. Douglas, on the adoption of your daughter. Well, thank you, Judge Markham. And I'd like to congratulate you, young lady, on acquiring a fine father. Thank you! <laughs> Mrs. Douglas, it would seem you are to be congratulated as well. I have to agree with you, Your Honor. We're very grateful for your help, Judge. Oh, it's my pleasure. Goodbye, Miss Douglas. That's you, Dodie. Oh, bye.
That's the way it works, Dodie. Being adopted means you're a Douglas, just like the rest of us. Chip and Ernie, my real brothers now? Right, and me too. And Katie's my sister. Sister-in-law, but that's just as nice. How about somebody cutting the cake? How about the babies? Oh, you're a real aunt, and they're all your nephews. Hey, that's me. <laughs> Why doesn't somebody cut the cake? <laughs> yeah, Charlie, it uh, looks almost good enough to eat. With all this jabbering going on, I didn't think anybody was ever going to get to it. <laughs> it's a lovely cake, Charlie, and it was very thoughtful of you to make it. You don't want a piece, do you, Ernie? I'll force myself. <laughs> Being adopted sure is neat. Yeah, I'm adopted, too. We're all Douglases. Except for Uncle Charlie. He's an okay sir. <laughs> Don't worry, Uncle Charlie. We'll adopt you, too. Well, good, because nobody ever wants us older kids. <laughs> creepy boy named Douglas. I like it. How come you got a new name? Because my new daddy adopted me. I'm glad I don't have to get a new daddy. I think it's me. I guess it's okay if that's all you got. But old daddies are twice as good as new ones. They are not. They are so too. Give me that note. No. You give me that. Try and get it. Sweetheart, it's Mommy. Oh, darling. Oh, did you have another bad dream? Oh, did something in your dream frighten you? Oh, well, you want to tell me about it? Well, it might help if you talk about it. Well, uh, what's the trouble in here? Oh, she, uh, she had a bad dream. Oh, well, dreams aren't real, Dodie. They can't hurt you. You know that, don't you, Dodie? Yes. Can I sleep with you, Mama? Well, honey... Uh, can I sleep with you? All right. I'll sleep in here. Oh, uh, this bed isn't big enough for both of you. Uh, take her in our room, huh? Well, yes, but honey... Come oh. All right. Come on. Good night, Dodie. Good night, love. Maybe that's what you came after. Bye. Good night, sweetheart.
poor dear. Sweetheart, mm -hmm. honey, mm -hmm. time to get up. Mm -hmm. Oh, hi. Honey, listen, Dodie is going to sleep in here tonight no matter what. Well, we, we'll see. How did she uh, sleep in there? Well, she, she slept like a rock. Steve, whatever, whatever is bothering her, it, it really seems pretty deep. Yeah, well, I don't think we ought to try too hard to find out what it is. Uh, I think maybe the more we talk about the dreams, the more real they'll seem to her. I don't know, maybe you're right. Thanks. You know, this whole thing has been a pretty tough adjustment for her. I mean, new family, new school, new friends. Yeah, I know that's true, but I don't know. I just wish we could help her. I, I stayed awake all night worrying about it. You did, hmm? I did. You know, I'm not so sure Dodie is the one who needs the help. What do you mean? Well, look who slept like a rock, and look who spent the whole night worrying about her. <laughs> I'll see you at breakfast. Yeah, okay. Jody, how come? You're in our place. I always sit here. This is our place, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> It's full of vitamins and stuff. Uh, Debbie, you want to swap your pickles for Dota's banana? Sure. Oh, Karen, you can have the cookies. Tummy upset? No. Well, what is it? I don't feel good. Uh, well, honey, there has to be a reason why you don't feel well. What do you hurt? Sort of all over. Well, is it a sharp pain or a dull pain? Kind of in between. Can I come in? Mm -hmm. Well, look who's the lazy bones this morning. I don't feel good. Oh, that's too bad, Dodie. Uh, you think it's anything serious? Well, I don't think it's anything too serious. Maybe we ought to call Dr. Osborne. Well, honey, I think maybe we could handle this ourselves. Oh? Dodie, now you tell me if I touch you, if it hurts, okay? Okay. Ouch! Uh, yeah, just what I thought it was. Uh... Schoolitis? <laughs> I don't think we're going to have to call Dr. Osborne. Well, what do you recommend, Dr. Barber? Well, in cases like this, I think the best cure is a big dose of castor oil. I think I'll get better pretty soon. <laughs> Well, congratulations. I will say that's one of the fastest cures on record. <laughs> well, she does have to go to school. Yeah, I know. You don't think maybe school has something to do with those nightmares, do you? Oh, well, honey, she can't stay out of school indefinitely. I mean, whatever it is, she's just going to have to face it sooner or later. Yeah, I suppose. Hey, come on, Ernie. we got to go talk to Dodie. How come? Well, she doesn't want to go to school. <laughs> well, who does? <laughs> yeah, well, she knows she has to. 
And she's either sick or somebody's picking on her. And she's not sick. Come on. Well, it's nothing to be ashamed of if somebody's been picking on you. Sure. It happens to everybody. It does? Well, sure. Now, tell us who it is. It's a big old girl named Victoria. Well, what does she do? She picks on me. <laughs> we'll straighten her out. You will? Well, sure. You should have come to us first thing. What do you think big brothers are for? I don't know. Oh, come on. We better get down to breakfast. I'm starved. Me too. <laughs> Food at school and everything, Victoria. Yeah. Well, that's good, because Dodie's kind of little. Well, we want to make sure she gets plenty to eat. <laughs> that's what Big Brothers are for, huh, Chip? Right. You could do us a favor, Victoria. Okay. Well, Dodie's kind of new at school and everything. Well, we'd like you to see that nobody picks on her. Yeah. Well, we don't really know what we do to anyone that picked on our little sister. We probably have to cream them real good. <laughs> nice to meet you, Victoria. Yeah. <laughs> Want to kick the block? <laughs> Came here first. And we've been waiting a long time. You can go to the end of the line like everybody else. My big brothers wouldn't like that. <laughs> My really big brother is Robbie, and if he heard about this, he would do terrible junk to you. <laughs> it's okay, Dodie. <laughs> oh, honey, why don't you get it? I'll put these away. Okay. Hello. Yes, this is Rob Douglas. What? Me? Where'd you get that idea? Hey, who is this? Wait a minute. What kind of a conversation was that? Who was that? She wouldn't tell me her name. It sounded like a little girl. What did she want? She wanted to know what terrible, awful things I do to people. <laughs> well, it must have been a gag. Yeah. Now, some kooky kids will do anything for a laugh. Me, Jack the Ripper. <laughs> Let her sit there. How do we know she has any big brothers? I saw him. I've got another big brother who's already grown up and married and had three babies at once. <laughs> What's so big about that? I bet my daddy's bigger than he is. I've got a daddy, too. He's bigger than a giant, almost. My daddy isn't that big, but he sure can yell loud. <laughs> Nobody yells at me. I'm the only little girl in the family. I don't have any dessert. Good 
morning. I'm Pauline Lewis, Mrs. Douglas, Victoria's mother. Oh, yes, we met at the PTA. Won't you come in? Thank you. Oh, would you like to sit down? Can I get you some coffee? Or oh, tea? no, thank you. I hardly know where to begin. Well, is there something I can help you with? I really don't know. We've been having a, quite a time with Victoria. Oh? She's been having nightmares, waking up at night terrified. Well, I can sympathize with you. The same thing happened to Dodie a few weeks ago. What did you do about it? Well, nothing. It just disappeared as suddenly as it came. Well, in Victoria's case, it's as if she were deathly afraid of something. Or someone. Someone? I hate to say this, but I'd really come to the conclusion that it must be Dodie. Dodie? Victoria has cried out Dodie's name in her sleep several times. But Victoria is so much bigger. How could Dodie be a threat to her? Well, frankly, that's what I was hoping you could tell me. Well, I'll certainly ask Dodie and see what I can find out. Good. And I'd appreciate it if you let me know what you find out. The thought of anybody in his family being afraid of anything is doing something to her father. <laughs> well, as soon as I find out, I'll let you know. I certainly appreciate that. We're in the telephone. What kind? Bye. Thank you. Hi. Hi, Barbara. Where are the babies? Uncle Charlie has them outside. And he thinks that rugged outdoor men start with rugged outdoor babies. Oh. Something bothering you? I'm a little upset. I just had a very strange conversation with a very upset mother. What happened? Well, Mrs. Lewis thinks that Dodie is threatening her daughter. That's odd. I mean, I, I just don't understand it. Victoria is so much bigger than Dodie. What could she possibly threaten her with? Me. What? Last night, I got a phone call from a little girl who thinks I do terrible, awful things to people. You think there's any connection? Well, there's only one way to find out. Dodie, how could you do such a thing? She was picking on me until I told Chip and Ernie. Oh, you told Chip and Ernie about Victoria? Sure. Chip and Ernie, would you come in here, please? Dodie tells me you two knew about Victoria picking. Yeah, we did. We fixed her wagon. And your solution was to uh, scare a little girl? Well, she's not that little, Dad. Well, we did lean on her a little. But it was all sort of psychological. Was it psychological for uh, Dodie to threaten her with Robbie? Well, we didn't know she was going to do that, Dad. Of course, you know what you've done. You've treated Victoria worse than she treated Dodie. You understand that, don't you, Dodie? I guess so. Dodie, I always try to remember that most people are going to act towards you just about the way you act towards them. Okay, Daddy. Now, have you fellas any idea how to straighten this out? Why don't we just ignore it? Now, quiet, Ern. We'll figure something out, Dad. We psychology our way into this. We'll psychology our way out. <laughs> Come on, you guys. Let's talk it over. Well. Steve, I just don't understand it. I mean, Dodie has always been such a sweet-natured little girl. Well, honey, what Dodie did was strictly basic human behavior. She was pushed, so she pushed back. But our civilization is supposed to have progressed a bit beyond that. Unfortunately, that's not true. Dodie discovered the old principle of strength in numbers, and uh, she applied it. Come to think of it, so did I. How do you mean? Well, I waited till you got home before I talked to her. Oh. <laughs> How was your golf? Well, I had a very good front nine. I had uh, four double bogeys and five triple bogeys, and then, for some reason, my whole game fell apart. Oh, come on. I had a 61. Oh, come on. All right, 82. <laughs>
What makes you think she'll come by this way? She gets sent to the store a lot. See, I told you. Okay, you stay here until we call you, Dottie, and then you do what we said. Okay. Hi, Victoria. You want to do us a favor? A favor? Yeah. Oh, we got a little problem we thought you might help us with. You happen to be going to the store? Yeah. All by yourself? Yeah. Well, Dodie's not allowed to go to the store by herself. And we were wondering if you'd let her go along with you. How come? We think it'd be nice if she had a friend who's allowed to go to the store by herself. And if anyone picks on either one of you, we'll cream them real good. Hey, no kidding? Well, sure. As long as you don't have any brothers, we'd be glad to do the job for you. Okay? Okay. Hey, Dodie. Victoria says you guys can go to the store together. Hey, Nate. You want to go, Dodie? Sure. Oh, and don't forget. You guys got to take turns and stuff. Okay. I was thinking something, Dodie. What, Victoria? Douglas isn't a dumb name. Thank you. You know something, Ernie? What? Sigmund Freud would have been proud of us. 